only from commerce and science background can clear RBI grade B examination. You require years of study to clear this examination and the freshers are not prioritized during the interview. These are some of the most common myths that you must have heard of, right? But today we have one such live example with us who has against all these myths have cleared the examination being from non-commerce and non-science background and also with just 10 months of study and let me highlight and emphasize on this factor that she is just 22 years of age. So today we have Ms. Aditi Haldar with us who has this year uh, RBI grade B 2023 year examination she has cleared and uh, I really want to welcome you ma'am uh, on our platform and heartiest congratulations on the big win. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here as well. Right. Uh, so ma'am, there's a lot to discuss and a lot to study. I'm sure students would want to know about the strategy that you followed and also about how you tackle through uh, the, you know, that aspirant phase that you that you have to go through when you when you're preparing for the examination. So I'm sure they would want to know about some personal experiences as well. And we are going to discuss everything about it. But let's just start off with your education qualification and adding to that, uh, I, I'm sure people would also want to know that when did you decided that you want to, you know, prepare for this examination and you finally started off with the preparation. So if, I, if you're talking about my background, then my background is in English literature. I've done my graduation in, from St. Xavier's College, Kolkata and uh, completed my graduation in 2022. So thereafter, I started my preparation for the Reserve Bank of India. If you're talking about when did I think of uh, appearing for this exam, then it was around the starting of my third year that I started taking the, the decision that I will be appearing for this exam. Uh, mainly so because I had got into cryptocurrency trading before that. During the entire COVID tenure, I was uh, into trading. And uh, the Reserve Bank of India was keeping on coming into the news again and again. So uh, there on I thought that uh, this exam might be something or uh, might be my gateway towards the field of finance i can say right but but your background is like completely different uh till 12th also you you uh, followed humanities you you were there and after that also you followed english literature and suddenly like all together you you just chose some different path so uh how what was the reaction of the parents like did they feel like you are distracting from your goals or uh, what was their reaction regarding it so basically what happened is that uh, during school days, I would talk a lot about appearing for UPSC and which is why I had selected core humanities subjects that would help me during that preparation. But uh, when I got into cryptocurrency trading and I wanted to get into the field of finance, that is the time uh, Reserve Bank of India came into play. But uh, my family always wanted me to do a government job and the Reserve Bank of India also, uh, you know, satisfies that. Which is why there was not a, not much of a push that you shouldn't be doing this, you should be doing UPSC. So they were really happy that I am choosing the path by myself. So that is what happened. And my family has actually supported me throughout my preparation. My father was sitting with me, making down the notes for me. And he's been, he's been there from the start, right from the start. So no push from their side. It's like the collective success that your family has attained. Exactly. Right. Uh, but uh, like as you said that your parents were happy that you are choosing your own path and whatever that you are doing, it's it's good, right? But still, like the, because there's a notion in the market, right? You know, if you compare UPSC and RBI, of course, like the in terms of you can say power or you can say for any any uh, lux uh, not even luxury, but yes, you can say power and the benefits. As a UPSC uh, officer, you're going to get more, right? So, mm -hmm. but th was there this one particular thing that you know uh, you're going to lose a lot if you're going for RBI and not for UPSC? That is one way of seeing it but uh, we are more like a the glass is half full kind of a person so I am a person like that so very optimistic in nature and which means that we look at the good brighter side of the Reserve Bank of India's exam and uh, what the Reserve Bank of India has is that it's a very coveted job and I don't have to run at the beck and call of politicians something that I do not want to get into and I'm not someone who's craving for power. So that that being said that uh, then UPSC and Reserve Bank of India both are really good government jobs and RBI is more like an underdog and not not something that people really know of. So I think uh, it's a it's a good job. So this was ultimately the choice. 
right and and that's true like you know you should know your why like if you're not behind the power but you want to do something uh, creative and something to the mm-hmm. contribute to the nation's uh, development so rbi it is indeed it is a good opportunity it's a good platform as well as yes as you said it's an underdog currently so yeah that's true all right so okay so th- th- here's a little bit of your background and now if you talk about like now let's start off so if you are watching it for the very first time and you're not aware of rbi examination so they happen three phases phase 1 is just qualifying in nature it means the marks are not added into the final merit list then you have phase 2 and phase 3 now phase 1 subject it constitute of quant reasoning english and general awareness they have their respective sectional timing and uh, the weightage of uh, cur- uh, current affairs is maximum which is of 80 marks and then we have uh, quants that is of 20 marks and then we have a uh, uh, reasoning which is of 60 marks and english of 20 marks right yeah so uh, what was it's questions, questions number of questions yeah. number of questions are 60 not uh, the marks okay okay i'm sorry okay so number of questions are 60 right so if you talk about uh, the phase 1 like you're from humanities background so and in course school days also you had the same so definitely you must have not touched quant reasoning for quite a long time and this was the first examination that you were preparing for mm-hmm. and if we look at the previous uh, question paper it has been observed that uh, rbi it is constantly it is increasing the level of uh, quants and reasoning so mm-hmm. what was your reaction when you looked at the paper or like how did you manage we'll start with quant reasoning and english and then we'll move towards general awareness portion all right so if you're talking about quants section uh, i did not touch maths for 5 years and uh, this was the first time i was touching it in 2022 so uh, during that time the first thing i did was appear for a pre mock test in i exam b and uh, i i saw my performance it was not a to the mark at all so i went back and i did uh, the rs agarwal book completely and uh, thereon i started once i was well settled in a position that i know that my foundation is strong that is the time i moved on to a squants which is by adda 247 and uh, that is one book i've practiced at least two to three times and same for reasoning i practiced a reasoning's book that is adda 247's book again and uh, i've also practiced that also for two th- two to three times and uh, one thing i noticed was understanding the type of questions that are being asked in the exam actually works in your favor instead of just looking at the previous year questions trying to understand what are the type of questioning that they are trying to do so for example they will not ask you number series directly they will give it to you in quantity comparison so they are making it lengthy so it is not that the quants section is going to be very difficult it is going to be lengthy in nature and um, the level is similar to that of any kind of ibps po and sbi po exams as well it is just lengthier so the time will be a constant and you have to be very selective and very accurate when you are answering picking up particular questions so you have to be very accurate there and be very selective so quadratic equations is one chapter that you know that two to three questions are going to come from there if your basic arithmetic section is very clear so there there are going to be questions that come in quantity comparison data sufficiency and direct arithmetic questions even di is made of uh, such kind of questions so i think that that worked in my favor so understanding the type of questioning being selective and being accurate with the type of questions i'm attempting that was uh, and both for quants and reasoning i followed the same approach even for uh, reasoning what i've done is uh, attempted the miscellaneous questions first so all this logism questions and uh, machine input output questions uh, something like that and i've left out puzzles and seating arrangements completely so the focus uh, focus was more on critical reasoning if you're leaving out seating arrangements and puzzles then you have to do critical reasoning you cannot leave out that that chapter so you have to do that and um, again in reasoning also the questions are going to be very lengthy when you're reading the paper what you can uh, do is understand that the again the type of questioning the syllogism questions will not be the deck they might give you reverse syllogisms they might give you some not questions only questions so a bit in detail when you do topics a bit in detail it will be easier for you in the exam great uh, so as you said that first you clear the uh, your basics from rs agrawal and then you went uh, mm-hmm. towards the uh, the the practice test uh, that were there for two three times Uh, of mm-hmm. Adda. So I want to ask, like, how many months did it take for you to have have a good hold in quants and reasoning? I have devoted my first two months just to prepare for quants and reasoning. I did not take any additional subject up that time. I was just focusing on six hours. I would study maths and reasoning three hours each. 
per day right, right. and uh, so uh, the, like quantum reasoning both require a lot of your, you know mental calculations so was it exhausting like usually what uh, aspirants did do they go for one theoretical subject and one mm-hmm. one such subject so that there is a balance so mm-hmm. but uh, what's your take in this basically coming from a non science background i had to devote that much time to my quantum reasoning i could not skip it at all so i am sure that if i have to give 6 hours of my time i get to spend more time uh looking at my social media also so i get 2 to 3 hours for my social media i would look there and uh, the remaining 6 hours i'm sitting at home and i'm studying so 6 hours is fine 3 hours in the morning 3 hours in the evening right so, but that's very interesting like you did not uh, usually students they just uh, uh, cut them off through the world and uh, you were active on social media so like did that did that help you or was it sometime it was distraction and you got scolded by the parents it was like a form of addiction and uh, i could not escape it and i have not ex- escaped it at all so my instagram was always on continuously and my father would come and tell me that you're spending more time on the phone than you're doing in your actual studies but i would try to compensate it if i have uh, scrolled for like say one hour so out of guilt i would study for two extra hours so that right. is something i would do right 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 okay so like it's like maze bhi kare but then padhai bhi ki right so uh, as and one more thing i really want to ask uh, like uh, you know you you studied like you cleared all the basics in content reasoning and uh, in the examination but you were very specific because uh, you know usually students they because uh, they risk it at content reasoning they lose the cut off and that is why they are not able to clear the phase 1 mm-hmm. but because you have practiced so many times didn't you had that temptation in the examination that let's try one more or like uh, how did you control that temptation that is also very big thing because i knew that the more i attempt it might be the cause of me losing out on marks so i knew that i have to attempt 7 to 8 questions and they have to be correct for quants So I knew that this is the amount of questions I will do, and it has to be correct. And that is the only approach I followed. I tried to read through all the questions that were there, but uh, then I ultimately stuck on just doing the minimal amount of questions. Also, time is going to be a problem, so you will not be able to do more than ten questions in general, even if you are really good at maths. So uh, you will have to do around seven, eight correctly questions that are correct and accurate. So that was my approach. I did not try to. go on board i did not even have the time to go on board so i right. just stuck to being selective and accurate and and then you have that uh, feeling that what if i am not able to, because this sectional timing like you cannot switch between the sections so mm-hmm. didn't you have that feeling of what if i am not able to score much good in general awareness so mm-hmm. i should you know uh, i should do something in this particular section only uh, so basically english has been my strong point so i knew that i would cover up most of my uh, the marks that i am looking for in the english section itself and uh, the remaining part general awareness would do right right okay so for content reason this was your approach english i i think you must not have followed any sources you There is already no done for your english. your graduation in that right? just given multiple mock tests right and for if you talk about general awareness now it's like 80 80 questions come out of it mm-hmm. so uh, what what uh, and uh, you know it's very diversified if you look at the types of questions that are asked in rbi mm. general awareness it's very diversified a lot of schemes and then you have uh, rbi notifications comes a lot and then there is random general awareness and reports comes like it's so diversified mm. so how did you channelize all this and made a schedule for yourself So if I talk about general awareness section, uh, if I talk about my sources, so I have been one of the confused aspirants who had subscribed to several sources, tried reading several sources, and uh, I found them bulky. Sometimes I could not retain most of them, but uh, then ultimately I stuck to reading Edutab's current tab uh, that has both the current news and also the PIB news included, and uh, the scheme tab, the report tab. and for notifications that is for phase 2 mainly the rbi tab so uh, i've completely relied for the my gs source has been completely reliant on uh, edutabs uh, content right. Right. and so yeah please continue and if i'm talking about the type of questioning that is happening right now in ga uh, the depth is it is a bit in depth of questioning that is happening so uh if asean is in news they will not ask you that who are the uh, like where the summit was held they will ask you uh, they will give you five member names and they will ask you who which country does not belong to asean 
that's something like that if there's a ranking and report questioning they will not ask you who was the top 3 they will ask you who was after india who is ranked after india or something something like uh, who was the seventh in position in that uh, particular report so something which is a bit out of the box you have to re- read a bit in depth of gk that is one understand that the first news are very important all the first happening that are hap- that are there all the banking banking news rbi news seb news all of these are important but apart from that also visit the rbi website at least once because some form of questioning might be happening from there and a bit of questioning also happens from your main syllabus like we had a question on risk management also so try to go through the main syllabus basics of main syllabus at least what are derivatives what are the basic norms what are risk management what are the different types of risks so i think then you will get a good hang of uh, what to what are the types of questions that are coming for gk right now right so so as you said that you followed our magazine like uh, for, for example current stats about stats keep stuff where we combine all the news uh, sources that exist mm-hmm. and whatever important news are there from examination perspective we provide right but while explaining this you also said that sometimes you used to forget the date right mm-hmm. so was it like frustrating because you know you're studying so much and you're forgetting everything and uh, how did you tackle with that so i would break down sometimes that i'm not being able to recall anything and that i am not meant for this exam so just two days back i read some uh, data and i'm not being able to recall it uh, that has been a thing and despite that i would try to keep revisiting it revising it every single day one thing i can say is that i've been very consistent and i've there has not been one day that i've not studied no festivals no weddings nothing i've sat down and i've studied so uh, i've tra- tried revising the same facts over and over and over again so i think that was the only way cramp it all up there is no other way you can recall data so that was the only only way forward that was the only thing i followed <laughs> Right. So, so like uh, when you were doing general awareness, so at that time you did not test quant reasoning English, or you were doing some practice tests for that. Sometimes I would give one or two mocks, uh, but uh, every time I would give the mocks, I would skip the general awareness section because I wanted to see how much was I scoring in the quant reasoning and English section, and I tried to ensure that my my scores are at least between thirty five to forty uh, for quant reasoning and English, depending on the mock tests you are giving in which platform you are giving. you will understand that 35 to 40 is a good score and there on gk is an add on right right yes gk is an add on and by that we have done the first chapter okay uh, the first phase that uh, you have done right so now when phase 1 was done so were you certain that you'll make it to phase 2 or uh, you waited for the result no no i was certain that uh, i might clear it and uh, the best way to go forward is just uh, go through phase 2 again i had uh, completed my phase 2 syllabus before that but uh, it was again revising it and practicing an- answer writing after that point right uh, so so one thing even before starting off how do you prepare how did you prepare for phase 2 one thing i really want to add like even though you were full time uh, working uh, i'm sorry full time aspirant uh, but still uh, you know as you were discussing abhi currently that you uh, uh, sometimes used to you used to go through the rbi websites you were cramping everything you were also giving mock tests it's already a lot so mm-hmm. i want to ask like how did you actually manage time for it it might help uh, as some of the aspirants like uh, did you prioritize things or like that because simultaneously you were preparing for phase 2 as well and mm-hmm. phase 1 in itself and especially for you because you do not have the background in any of the examination and neither do mm-hmm. you have any competitive examination experience where quant mm-hmm. reasoning english generally people who have the experience they have a little bit basics of quant reasoning and english mm-hmm. so how did you like managed phase 1 and phase 2 and that to from scratch and as a fresher mm-hmm. so as i said that the first two months was completely devoted to maths and reasoning i did not do any other subject at that time and there on uh, after that i started taking phase 2 subjects one at a time i completed management first i was doing a bit of uh, giving mock tests of phase 1 at that time also so it was free mock tests that were there i was giving one mock test or i was revising a bit of maths that i had done before so that was on so i would give say 2 hours to that and rest i would uh, devote to studying management or finance understanding the concepts so that i have cleared and ga i have just focused on 4 months of ga for uh, for prelims so i ensured that from january i start reading but then uh, last 4 months because january and february i could not remember that much the exam was in july so last 4 months i prioritized and i last only the last 4 months of gk i have done really well most of the questions also come out of that 
if you have the time then you can obviously do 6 months of ga but 4 uh, months suffices apart from that budget economic survey we have to do so um, what i did was i tried making sh- uh, schedules every single day that uh, i will complete these 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 things uh, in a day i did not put a timer to it that uh, this is the time that will be required but i at least gave myself that i need to complete these four five things uh, today so right. that but is the there, way were there time where you could not uh, touch the the schedule that you have designed for that day and yes yes know, and so uh, i had buffer days for it and i knew that if i'm not being able to complete these amount of things in a day so it goes uh, goes to my buffer days so say two days i had or three days i had for buffer so it will it will just keep shifting to the next day then right but maximum time you used to uh, yes. touch that whatever goals that you have assigned for yourself i tried to make it more realistic in nature so i knew that i will not be able to complete four topics so say two topics a day something like that right 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 and uh, and as you discussed like your your father used to sit with you and make questions and all that so was it for phase 1 or phase 2 like what throughout the journey there was throughout the journey he sat down with me when i was uh, when i started with my quants he sat down and he's helped me with the quants right from the start and uh, thereafter in phase 2 also he would make my management notes sometimes sometimes okay. he would help me help me with the ga so that helped me a lot a lot of short notes we made uh, while we were studying management most of the times i've tried revising the concept notes uh, but uh, after that also just to remember it just to memorize it i would have short notes that my father made so i would just okay, read so he it. used to read and made notes for you and once yes. you read the concept notes and yes. after that you used to revise the short notes that's that's really wonderful and you know that really brings out that point that uh, whenever you you are struggling with something if you have people around with you who are encouraging and they are with you uh, mm-hmm. of course it is tough still but it becomes comparatively a little bit easier it is for, it is yeah for 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 achieve the aim right so now for phase 2 th- those who don't know so we have three paper that happens uh, we have uh, uh, esi we have uh, fm finance management and then we have prescriptive english and all are of 100 marks each and this time phase 2 it, it does get included into the final merit list so here is the time where you have to score the maximum that you have to score so uh, when we talk about like w- let's talk about subjects one to one we'll start uh, we- we'll keep english at the end because as you have the background i i, I think there's not much of the strategies that must have been followed but because you are experienced and you have done graduation definitely students would want to know uh, what as a uh, english literature graduate you would recommend uh, students but we'll start off with management so uh, what are the sources did you refer and what do you recommend students uh, the strategy which worked for you like mm-hmm. uh, which can be followed by them i've completely relied on edutap's course for phase 2 so management finance everything i've done from uh, the concept notes one thing is that people have the have the notion that it is quite bulky which is true and uh, but what happens is your concepts get really clear when you're reading the concept notes and uh, they use a lot of examples and uh, you will be able to write your answers well if you go through the concept notes over and over again i did not refer to the summary sheets that much i've just referred to the concept notes and only for my particular revision i have uh, summarized my points in one page every time i've read one chapter and also I, i would write down some data points even for management for example there is a topic on motivation i would google search on any company that has helped with motivation and any kind of data points that are there and i would write them down so what would happen is i would be able to use it in the introduction of my answers or in the conclusion so something like that even for management although it is a static portion but i would try to include if there is some kind of data point that is there so that is something that i followed and uh, finance as well the completely from edutap uh, for the descriptive section i followed dr amit lal so i had dr amit lal's course there and i extensively practiced de- descriptive writing there he would give a, give us personalized feedback and then i would work work on it and a lot of application based questions i practiced and uh, same for uh, same goes for esi paper uh, but if i talk about uh, the weightage of schemes and reports right now They, we did not get to see a lot of schemes in phase 1 all the people read schemes for phase 1 and i completely skipped it because i thought 80 questions are there for phase 1 let me not do it i will just do the flagship schemes the important ministries schemes schemes that are in news or schemes that uh, came out in the budget economic survey only those schemes i have focused on and uh, 
schemes in news that come a lot under the uh, schemes tab only so i've ki- kind of kept on revising the same things for facebook again if i talk about how schemes are coming right now schemes are becoming more application based so you cannot just read the factual points that are there in the scheme you have to understand that how do you apply those schemes in a particular situation so uh, schemes schemes are becoming that way and if you're talking about reports we had direct descriptive questions uh, for reports we did not have the easier questions that were given in 2022 and 2021 you have to know the report very specific parts of the report you have to know to write a descriptive answer so you have to focus on reports you have to focus on schemes there is no other way around you have to read them through as if it is a descriptive portion of your syllabus that is one thing and uh, because i have practiced descriptive writing i did not find the difficulty to meet the word limit as well it was uh, i could do it in the exam right right so uh, so as you were uh, abhi jaise aapne bataya so means usually in esi more of the current questions will be there exactly. like even if it's from report or maybe mm-hmm. whatever question will be there it will uh, and are there any question from static as well or it's usually from the current affairs only the descriptive that will come uh for the short short marker questions we did have a bit of static portions uh basically finance and economics the esi paper both of them are overlapping subjects actually so you will find topics that from esi that might come in the finance section or finance topics that might come in the esi section and they one or two questions you might find it that they are static in nature but most of it has to be dynamic for esi but even in finance it is tending to become more and more dynamic so you will find questions that are uh, current topic related we had ondc as a question which was uh, direct des- descriptive questions which is current affairs right uh, but usually in fm static comes and in esi yes. uh, comes yes. but as you have said ki finance mein bhi ab thoda dynamic nature dikh raha hai mm-hmm. and one more thing i want to ask like uh, as you were explaining you said that you uh, did a lot of application based questions when you practiced mm-hmm. right so i want to ask like even in, if the static comes in fm so is it like application based questions that comes are you were you talking about mcqs or were you talking about in descriptive writing mm-hmm. only in descriptive writing also we've uh, practiced a lot of application based questions what happens is when we practice certain kind of questions it helps us to write in the actual exam no matter what kind of questions are coming static questions you will be able to write uh, directly you know the you know the topics by heart you will go and be able to produce it but uh, when it is something more application based it needs you to apply your mind at that time what you've studied and how will be how will you produce it so that requires a bit of thinking so i've practiced that quite a bit so that actually helped me when i was writing the answers it was coming coming to me easily so right, right. and if you talk about descriptive english so i mean so what similarities or what like for example essays come in that so did you observed any pattern uh, on what basis the questions on essays are asked or is it like very random thing that has come okay just before that let me mention that uh, for finance management and esi both of the papers uh especially for finance management what i tried doing is just this was just before my phase 2 exam when i was revising the concept notes one thing that i had done was look at the topics that have already come in 2022 and 2021 so i focus on the topics that have not come in the exams and tried revising them more so the chances of questions coming from topics that have not up- come in the exams before that th- that obviously increases so try to focus more on that uh you will get at least one or two questions from there uh, especially the static portions and uh, if i'm talking about essays what i had done i had written down all the current happenings that were hap- that had like all the current news basically artificial intelligence was in news so i would write write down essays for example for artificial intelligence i um i wrote a broad topic essay so everything on artificial intelligence and a bit specific also for artificial intelligence in banking sector use of artificial intelligence in healthcare sector so i had written down sub points of it as well so when i i had practiced around 10 essays i had written 10 essays down obviously none of the, them came in the actual exam and i happened to use my mind again and write down an essay which is uh, completely different unexpected and an unexpected essay i can say more most of these essays are quite random but you will get at least one or two that might fit in your bracket for example climate uh, an essay on climate change might come it has been on news for quite some time so things that are current oriented you might get one or two of these essays but apart from that another essay that will be completely unexpected so 
preparing for it is a good good way to go but uh, reading sample essays and going might not help a lot because it does not develop your habit of writing if you actually sit down and start writing that works uh, right. quite well right so uh, therefore as it like for example for the current affairs you also follow the magazines right and mm-hmm. many aspirants they just follow the magazines and magazines are designed at such where very in a short and crisp manner the information mm-hmm. is provided so that mm-hmm. you know person can mug up things mm-hmm. but for example you give the example of crime, climate change or climate crisis right mm-hmm. so now when somebody might be aware of maybe the mm-hmm. uh, some pointers for for the topic but because they are relying on the pdfs they don't have much of the descriptive knowledge of it right mm-hmm. so uh, yeah so in that case like uh, did you used to follow some editorials also mm-hmm. uh, or uh, like how was it so every time every time i would feel that a particular current topic is important i would write the current topic down and say for example green finance is there so i would write down the topic green finance and all the topics i made down i listed them down and when i would actually search it on the internet when i was writing down my essays at least some content related to that number one i focused on having data points for it and number two to make my essay opinionated in nature having better view points so i would always search in google with editorials i would search green finance editorial say in hindu or indian express so i would get opinionated view points from people who write these articles and then i would make my content i would prepare the content so automatically that way uh, my content is ready data is ready try to have a look at the government schemes that are relevant also so that you can include them in your essay or uh, examples of live companies doing certain certain things in that regard so you can put them down as well say see some company has done something for green finance uh, in the csr so include that example there so that way you can prepare your content and when you just try to essay try to have a introduction body conclusion that is it try to make it more flowy right and uh, did you used to make the handmade notes or you used to practice or you used to type only because the examination pattern is like such i had uh, my evernote uh, page so i i would write my notes there and i would prepare my content all the essays especially i would prepare it there so i had prepared around 10 essays and i just kept on uh, revising it for example i had to prepare an essay on ondc but that came in the finance management sec- section but that helped me actually because uh i knew the data points by heart so i could just write it down right right true okay so uh, so now then phase 2 happened right mm-hmm. and uh, after that uh, did you waited or were you then again certain that you'll you'll make it from phase 2 no i was not certain about phase 2 at all i why but you practice so much so w- what was that thing which made you think that my maybe like it becomes a little bit doubtful because uh, for mcq sections i did not attempt that many questions again i tried to be selective but i tried to be accurate there as well so i felt that i had attempted a lot lesser questions that most of than most of the aspirants so i felt that uh, i will not be able to clear it uh, at right. times and uh, when i cleared phase 2 i waited for quite some time till they give the results thereafter i started my preparation for interviews right so during that time period when you were not certain so then uh, were you planning what to do next or Uh, like uh, were you just relaxing because uh, for the past 10 months you were studying so much so there what, is no relaxation that happens until the results come out uh, i was continuously counting marks that how how much can i actually get and uh, the other thing that i was doing is that uh, i thought that let me just prepare for another exam because that will keep me occupied and uh, that at the time i started preparing for rbi assistant i did not take nabad into account because i thought uh, uh, agriculture is not a topic that i can prepare in such a less amount of time at least not my cup of a cup of tea so let me just completely eliminate that option and uh, prepare for rbi assistant instead so that is what i focused on and i gave the rbi assistant exam as well but that was way after my interviews because i was again waiting after the interviews right 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 and and that's also true you know many aspirant and this we when we take workshop we also say so like aspirant today they are preparing for 
any examination like for mm-hmm. every month if there is an examination they're preparing for it and because of that even they have the caliber they are not able to clear that right because mm-hmm. the syllabus is so vast and everybody know uh, like for example you said agriculture is not your cup of tea right but mm-hmm. you were aware of that so you eliminated and you focused uh, even though as you have not touched for 5 years quant reasoning but then you practice and you mm-hmm. felt like no our rbi assistant is much better option and that's uh, that, that is something that i want to tell every aspirant who is watching currently also that know your weaknesses and strength and be practical about it see how many months are there for the examination and mm-hmm. what is actually doable if if the current examination even if it is doable you are 0% prepared you can you know hold it mm-hmm. and you can prepare for such examination which can uh, give you better result all right so when then uh, even i think because your whole pa- family was preparing for the examination along with you that time period was just not for you but whole family it was uh, very uh, suspenseful for that time period yes they have sat down and uh, they also made a lot of sacrifices i can say you know all, the entire entire environment that you are uh, studying in actually makes a lot of difference so it is the environment it is the efforts of the family it is your own hard work your consistency all of these come together and then you might have a mixture that creates success right and and uh, like you were active on instagram so so i'm assuming you might be sharing reels with your friends also so are your friends aware of all these or uh, are they also preparing for rbi uh, so i have a very uh, small group of friends i have two to three friends and uh, they are very much aware that i was giving this examination from my graduation days itself and uh, but they have their own fields both like all my friends they are going in their respective fields but they have never put that pressure in me that why are you not meeting why are you not coming out why are you not interacting as much as you used to so there was no such kind of pressure that was there and they have been my silent cheerleaders so Right. That's there. And if you say in the Gen Z language, the those are the uh, green flags that you have in your life. Yes, yes, uh, I do. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the friends who who know who are very understanding that okay, if she is not meeting us for a while, it's okay. We we can yes. have a party after she clears the examination, right? So uh, okay, so now then finally the result came. and of course now the next step was to prepare for the um, uh, interview so how many days did you get for the interviews and uh, then w- what was your strategy to prepare for it we got around 15 days i got around 15 days because uh, my interview was on 3rd of october and uh, all the interview span of time has been till 8th of december so i had to wait out uh, till 8th of december which was a long time uh but for interviews i can say that uh, my preparation a uh, lot of my preparation i got help from the fellow aspirants a lot of the aspirants have uh, pitched in they've helped in and uh, they've helped me frame my answers also they've helped me uh question a lot of times they've uh, on over calls we've talked and they were they've questioned me a lot of times And I'm sorry I'm sorry to interrupt but where did you uh, meet these friends or is there something group or anything which mm-hmm. the aspirants can also join uh, there's a telegram group called we learn here so uh, they give you pib news consistently if you want to practice descriptive writing you can actually follow that group as well because uh, uh, they will give you sometimes uh, the questions they will help you follow your targets they will set down the targets you will be able to follow that as well so it's a really nice group people have a lot of people have passed from that group itself so following that group actually works and you will find people from there as well so you can make your own groups they can help you out and uh, the people that i found was from dr amit lal's group actually and uh, they were also fellow aspirants and they helped me a lot during my interview preparation and they had a lot of experience of this exam so they they helped me with the, with questioning all the time they were questioning over the call and uh, we would do a question answer session all the time so that helped me a lot but uh, for interview i will say that you have to prepare for um, from the rbi website for example you have to do uh, the home page really well know the icons there are seven icons right now you have to do the icons really well and uh, a bit in detail for example the udgam icon is there go a bit in detail of uh, what it is and that is rbi website home page there will be a rbi uh, working and functions pdf that is there it's a bit bulky please go through the entire thing there will be direct questions that will come from the rbi working and functions when the interview interviewer is asking you questions the third would be preamble know it by heart they will ask you sometimes to uh, say it word to word so know it by heart and uh, 
the RBI Act and the BR Act is there. There will be certain questions that will come out of it. If they ask you questions like, does RBI pay the income tax? You will be knowing it only if you have read the RBI Act. So certain, these kind of questions you have to be aware of. That is number one. And uh, the number two would be your HR questions that are coming out of your bio data, which means that you have to know all the keywords that you've used in your bio data. You cannot leave out anything. And then there are basic questions that also come, uh, which can be related to your main syllabus again. They might ask you what are basal norms. They might ask you what are, what is the regulatory sandbox. So uh, basic questions can, can come. And certain other basic questions like, why do you want to join RBI? What do you know of RBI? Uh, which department do you want to work in? So these are basic questions that you can prepare. I've used uh, ChatGPT and Bing for these kind of questions. And I would make them uh, chat GPT frame my questions and then I would prepare my answers for it. All right. All right. And uh, did you give any mock test also? Yes, or... for, mo for mock interviews, I've appeared for all the mock interviews of all the platforms. And uh, I would get a similar kind of response from all the mock interviews about my speed of speaking and how I interrupt. So I had to work on both of those points. So it was a similar kind of uh, review that I was, I was getting. And for Edutab's mock interview, I can say that it was uh, more factual in nature in the sense that they were ac they were actually testing my knowledge there. So when I gave the Edutab interview, I wasn't that prepared. And uh, I, got, I got to know that I have to read the preamble and the RBI Act well from the Edutab mock interview itself. So, and did, uh, did that help? Yes, it helped. They asked me the preamble in my actual interview as well. All right, all right. Okay, so uh, one more thing, like now these are the questions that were asked and everything, right? But uh, when you were going for the interview, right? And of course, there were other aspirants you must have interacted or maybe you have observed uh, how they are there, right? And you're just 22 years old and you have no experience uh, because you're just out of uh, your, your college, right? So you don't have any experience, uh, work experience if I want to uh, specify. So uh, did you ever had that question or doubt that are they going to prefer you over the ones who are who have a lot of experience maybe or maybe the people who are preparing for so many years and they are uh, they, even at the age if we say right if somebody mm -hmm. is like 27 years 22 years even there, there is certain maturity level difference right mm -hmm. so are ever these questions did they bother you so basically after the mock interviews that i had given uh, one of the major reviews that i would get was that i am very confident so uh, that review actually worked for me because I was very confident I'd ever compare myself to other people. And uh, that worked in the interview place as well. I saw a lot of people and I, I am sure that all of them are co competent aspirants. But then I knew that so am I. So uh, if I have got my place there, so I'm as competent as anyone else. And uh, I deserve my fair chance there. So that is something I would keep reminding myself, you know, positive affirmations work really well if you're telling it out loud to yourself. So that is something that I've followed throughout the journey. You know, the fellow aspirants I would be talking to, they've also inspired me a lot. I would see their journey and I would get really inspired. And then there are my parents, my parents are there, so they have motivated me a lot. So all of that included, so there's a lot of positivity that was there. And if you're talking about self-doubt, that does creep in, you cannot escape it. But uh, again, you have to keep talking to yourself that uh, you are going to do it no matter what. And I kept on telling myself that I am going to crack it in my first attempt no matter what happens. Uh, there is no what ifs that are going to come in, in my way. I am going to do it this time. So which is why I just focused on RBI grade B actually. And I had thought I would not give any other exams because of this. Right. Very beautiful thing that you have said, right? That self-confidence and uh, that self-belief that you are equally competent as other aspirants are that that's very true and especially it happens uh, we get a lot of questions you know a uh, student asking that they they have no working experience and will will that be a hindrance or not and you know it's very uh, not many people understand that if you are just out of college and you have immediately you have cleared some written examination definitely the panel will also see that mm. you what you have done right so mm. they are not going to question why were you not working because you have just been graduated and they that asked after me a that... question actually in the yeah. interview that uh, you know Aditi the way you talk you re you are really good with words but uh, how good are you with numbers 
so i took them back to my prelims time and i told them that i've cleared the prelims and uh, i i am decent enough with numbers and also because i've cleared the prelims and they had a laugh over that fact that uh, so they they are very understanding when it comes to uh, your journey so they yeah. they value your journey really well the board is usually very cordial and they will understand that you have worked for it if you've come till this far so it means something so that something kind of is definitely that kind of respect you will get whether you are a fresher whether you have gap years whether you are a working aspirant if you are not does not matter they will give you that kind of respect Right, true. Because, uh, because clearing pre and mains in itself it's a big task. So if you have reached to that stage, even though uh, maybe in interview you might not be you know uh, that good, but at least they mm-hmm. would respect you for uh, preparing exactly. yourself uh, mm-hmm. for the written examination. True. Mm-hmm. So then finally, okay, so interview happened, and then for two months you had to wait, and I I think that must have been torturous for you, and again with for your family as well because all were preparing for it. we would keep on calculating marks day and night i would get nightmares that what if i'm not clearing this exam so sometimes it does creep in you cannot help it it will happen and that is where where i thought that i will be preparing for rbi assistant as well so that is a kind of distraction that happens that take a two months i am going to prepare for this and then i will give this exam by that time maybe the results might come out right and finally when the result came how was the reaction at home all of us felt relieved together we felt relieved that it is over and we are done with it more than happy we were relieved that it's done we don't have to study the study for the same exam all over again <laughs> that's that's true and and very important thing which uh, have been conveyed by you a little bit indirectly it's you know to give your best at one time only so that you don't have to do the same things time and again and definitely it becomes frustrating because mm-hmm. you're reading and you're like yaar ye to padha hai but mm-hmm. then again you did not get the result before so you had to push yourself that much so it's mm-hmm. better to give your all at once mm-hmm. instead of uh, being a little bit lenient about it lenient about the age and uh, because you were just 22 and you if you wanted like you could have given that excuse that you're just young you have a lot of years with you you have five attempts mm-hmm. uh, for rbi mm-hmm. uh, but you decided not to waste that and definitely now you will be joining you have much good opportunities promotional opportunities you have uh they are in rbi and it's it's very bright future for you and we we are very happy for you for your family you so and much. we are also very proud of you uh for uh, for clearing the examination uh Thank so, so at the end like if you want to say something to the aspirants who are preparing for examination and especially uh like the you you were from the the myths that are in market and you just broke every every myth uh, so what do you want to say to the aspirants uh, don't drop your weapons before you go to the war field so don't don't question yourself if you're thinking thinking that you will not be able to do so be that exception and uh, go there and win the war that is how it works and the other thing i would say is that you will learn a lot of a lot of things from failures failures of different aspirants as well so you will get a lot of stories from them and try to cherry pick things from everyone's strategies don't and then make a strategy of your own do not follow anyone blindly and stay curious stay consistent try to keep aiming for the eye of the bird and you will surely get there right so the beautiful uh, lines that you have said and uh, thank you ma'am for joining with us and sharing your views and strategies and your life experiences with the RBI grade B examination and we wish you all the very best for the future uh, there's a long journey ahead and uh, all the very best for that thank you so much ma'am